if you look at the black socialist platform, if you look at the Yahuru movement, International Democratic People's Yahuru movement, the African Socialist Party, if you look at the Nation of Islam, all groups that I have total respect for, they believe that we should force America to give us some states in this country so we can forge a black republic of our own, a black nation. From the Pan-Africanist perspective, from the Garveyite perspective, we see that as a big mistake. This is why Garvey said that the future of the black man outside of Africa spells ruin and disaster. Now, if you know anything about black history in this country, whenever we built up black power, Rosewood, Florida, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Charleston, South Carolina, Durham, North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, and the list goes on and on. We had at least 24 different black Wall Streets. Every time we built black power politically and economically, it was destroyed by our white folk with the help of the government. So for organizations who would argue that we should we can build a black nation amongst our enemy, look at this now. You're 40 million amongst 400 million. And you're going to build, they're going to give you five states. So let's say they give us, what, Texas, Mississippi, Arkansas, a few more states. They give us these five states, five, six, whatever. So you got black folks in the middle of the United States surrounded by white folks on all four sides. How in the hell could you possibly operate as an independent nation surrounded by your enemy on all four sides? It's a ridiculous concept from the Pan-African perspective. So as Garveyites, we never argue, let's get America to give us some states and build a country here. That's ridiculous. First of all, that's not even independent. How can you be independent in land given to you by your oppressor and you're surrounded by your oppressor? That's not no damn freedom. That's not freedom. So we right. They ain't going to let you build no nuclear bomb. <laughs> they ain't going to let you fly over their airspace. Not only that, listen, look, look at this, look at this. They can't stand you, see you as a genetic threat to their survival, are jealous of your potential, know your historical accomplishment, and you mean to tell me they got all black people in America concentrated in five states? Do you know what the hell they're going to do right after that? Do you know what they're going to do once they get you on five states? They're going to systematically begin to wipe you out. They're going to poison your food supply because they got to come through them because you're living in a country. Right. They're going to poison right. your water. In other words, by advocating an independent black republic in America, independent nation outside of America, you're helping white people perfect their plan of extermination. That's why we got to learn how to think. You got to be a thinker. I'm a thinker before I'm anything else, and I want all your listeners to learn how to think, analyze everything. Don't just believe something because the person who said it is believed to have been a great man or woman. That don't mean shit. You got to think and say, does this make sense to me? And so for Pan-Africanists, we're we not into that. We don't want no states, no black nations surrounded by white folks. That ain't no independent country. That's nonsense. But when you still love your slave master, you never want to get the hell away from him. So rather than leave and get build your own country, because guess what? You can go to any African Caribbean nation, buy some land, and build you an independent territory. You can go to Africa right now, okay? You can go to Ghana, Nigeria, and say, listen, we need 500 acres. We're going to build us a new African community for Africans who are coming back home to Africa. We need 500 acres. You will get it. So why not build your black nation in Africa? Why not build your black nation in Central South Africa? Why not build it in the Caribbean? Because you love it's, white people. You want it to be with your oppressor. You love him. That's not black nationalism. That's integrationism disguised right. as nationalism. Well, can I ask you this, Dr. Lamar? What about a historical land purchase in Africa? Do you think that's possible? Could going to somewhere, a country in Africa, saying, "Guess what? We want to, you know, what does it take for us to buy this land in Africa to build it?" Because you know, you know, when you look at Dubai, right? 
prior to Dubai being constructed, what's the first thing they released? They released architectural, conceptual images of it. Shit, we, we ain't even exist yet, but they just released the images, the propaganda, right? And so when you look at Dubai and what it is now and how much it costs, I think they said it costs $300 billion to build Dubai. Like, one thing I noticed about black folks in America right now is we don't have, like, our own vision of a black Zion. I feel like we need to put that together and let one. the people see. We don't want one. Right. You're right. absolutely right. I agree with you, my brother. One hundred percent. We don't the black people hate each other. The last thing they want to be is in a place surrounded by nothing but black people. They don't want that. See, Italians love being around Italians. European Jews love being around European Jews. Latinos love being around Latinos. Arabs love being around Arabs. Black people don't want to be. What's the first thing a black person does when they start making enough money to buy a house? They run to a white neighborhood to buy it. And the average Negro, after he get his master's, he's going to find a white woman and move out into the suburbs. Right. <laughs> we right. hate ourselves, my brother. So when you start talking about something, build a black nation. First thing they're going to say is, well, let's build it in America because they love white people. Right. They want to exactly. have access to white people. They love exactly. white people. Even so-called black nationalists, they love white folks talking that shit. They love them. You see, so the land purchase in our Africa, that's feasible. It's very doable. All you got to do is show Africa you're serious. Right, you go to exactly. any African government and say, guess what? We want to build a country. They're going to say, well, what do you plan on building? You're going to pull out your plans and say, listen, we're going to do a hospital. We're going to do 50 homes. We're going to do a community right. center, modern music studio. And this is how we're going to help, help, help our, help our uh, indigenous African brothers here in the continent. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to put 100 people to work. Okay? We also need to open up a bank. We can extend one of the banks you already have in your country, but we're going to need our own banking system, credit union, which could be an extension. It ain't got to be our own because we don't want to tie to American money anyway. In order for us to do this, we need 500 acres. You get it. That's nothing. Land is putting up on Africa. That's nothing. In fact, it's been even argued that half of Africa. Check this out. It's the second largest continent in the world, in the richest. Half of Africa has not even been developed yet. Hey, you man, see, you just playing games. You want to play everything. games. I don't right. like how I'm treated, but I don't want to get away from the man who mistreated me. So then people say, well, Africa got the white man over there. And you're right. The white man still dominates economically, but the, the question is why? Because Africa is still dependent because they have no other source of finance. But guess what? When we get over there, when we get over there, with our money that we bring from America, right. guess what now? With our engineers and our doctors. Exactly. Guess what now? Africa ain't got to look to the white man too much no more. Because we got brothers and sisters who can do it now. Who learned under the white man and now can take it and replicate those systems on the continent. The white man is there politically, economically, but numerically, Af we run that shit. Africa is the land of the blacks. Hands down. Yeah, the Chinese coming in trying to buy it all up. The Arabs coming in trying to buy it all up. And they will if we don't step in and take our position. You cannot let another race dominate the most minerally rich continent on earth. We will never rise if we let that shit happen. The new Cold War is China versus America for who's going to control the resources in Africa. That's the current Cold War taking place right now. We cannot let that happen. We will be destroyed. Right. How did you get it? Good brother David Inhotep wrote a book that Africans were the first Americans. Everybody need to read that. He talks about how the Africans came over here from Africa. So, yeah, you're right. We were here first, but we knew where we came from. Why are you, why are you, why are you so hell-bent? on disidentifying with the cradle of civilization. Why is that so important to so many black folks? Because you filled with self-hatred. There's all of this. You got to see it for what it is and keep it moving. And that's why I can't wait to open up the Fred Douglas Marcus Garvey School and save our children from all these anti-African, I don't want to be black ideologies that's running around. Intellectual masturbation sounding like it's good. It ain't nothing but bullshit. I know where you come from. You don't want to admit it, but... Go to Africa with me. I'll show you 20 people look just like your ass. Your mother, your father, I'll show you exactly where you came from. Right. I ain't from Africa. Get the hell out of my face with that bullshit. <laughs> All right, family, if you're listening, this is the time. Uh, Dr. Umar is the man of the people. He said he want to talk to the people. He want to build uh, with the people. So if you don't get him now, you might not get him unless you see him live. 
That phone number to call in is 713-955-0707. Again, that's 713-955-0707. And press 1 uh, with your question or your comment. I'm going to go down to area code 414-364. 414-364. Tell us your name, where you call it from, and whether you got a question or a comment. Yeah, my name is Jesse. I'm calling from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I got basically a comment about the, the number of uh, what he was saying is more white people in this country than there is black people. And I'm 47. From the time I was little to right now, I see more black people. Then you throw in the fighting during the Civil War, a lot of white people perished in that. So I'm figuring how them numbers get like that. <laughs> 300 what, million? From the numbers from 1865, and I always know they always use um, it's like uh, it's basically trickery. If I could uh, fool you to think there's that many people in this country, you gonna never want to go up against them. You gonna always think it's gonna be a slaughter. And I don't know. I want to know where you get these numbers from. Who giving these numbers? Because I've been seeing more blacks for my in my lifetime than white people. And they're good at scare um, tactics, and I think that's one of them. Okay. Uh, my response to that is, uh, well, firstly, it's not a scare tactic. Uh, secondly, I travel the country more than any other scholar alive, and I don't see more black people than white people. Um, I know for a fact that they've been holding our numbers quite steady for a while uh, with mass incarceration, birth control, homosexuality, abortion, so forth and so on. Um, and although the numbers might be uh, underestimated to some extent, I will concede that. Uh, I will concede that I believe that we may be more than the 12 to 18 percent that is generally reported by the census. I believe we may be upwards of 30 percent, but I would find it hard to believe that we were more than 40 percent. I would find that hard to believe. But here's the issue. From a military standpoint, Black people trying to wage war against the United States government without any foreign allies is a ridiculous undertaking. You cannot win a war without a supply of food. You cannot win a war without a supply of weapons. And you cannot win a war without some sort of independent communication source. Whenever an army goes to war, they develop a source of communication that cannot be infiltrated, special phones, special Internet. We own none of that technological sophistication that is necessary. We know how to build it. We have those who can build it. But to be able to protect yourself and your deception is going to be quite a difficult undertaking. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think that it is not in our best interest to go to war without guaranteeing a steady supply of weapons. You don't manufacture anything. There has never been a people that has ever won a war in world history, and you can do your research on this. There's never been a people who has ever won a war in world history who did not produce the materials necessary for war or did not have a relationship with the country who could distribute it to them. We don't produce it, and we don't have a relationship with a country. So once you start fighting, where are you going to get your bullets? Your guns at? Where are your bombs coming from? Where are your cell phone communication lines coming from? You don't have that yet. So once we build all that and you say you want to go to war, then be my guest. But again, I look at the world from an international perspective. I don't have a domesticated Negro perception. So I'm not just looking to fight America. This is not my fight ground. It is not. I know where I come from, and I know that whoever owns that continent runs this world. The white man is king because he's king of Africa's resources. The Chinese are about to be king because they're soon to be king of Africa's resources. If we want to be king, because resources as well. Yes, we need an army. But there could be no army without infrastructure. There could be no army without infrastructure. How the hell are you going to go to war when you don't have a landmass that you control? Land is the basis of revolution, and it is the first thing to be fought for in war. So I just think often when we start talking about fighting the oppressor, we need to be a little bit more mature in our approach to that subject. Because when fighting before we're organized, 
We're fighting without an infrastructure. We're fighting without a, a supply of weapons, food. How are our women and children going to be protected? All I'm saying is let's think through these questions a lot more thoroughly before we start telling our young people, because I'm concerned that too many of us so-called warrior Africans are misleading our young people into thinking that they should just go get a gun unless that's not how wars are won. That's not how wars are won. The first thing you do when you fight a war is you cut off the enemy's ability to resupply himself. Have we dealt with the logistics of war? Sun Tzu talks about that, the logistics. What is our logistical plan for food, clothing, shelter, and defense of our women and children? Until you can show me a logistical plan, stop talking to me about armed war with white folks while you're living in a country. What people has ever won a war with another people fighting on the land that they control? Vietnam beat America because they drew America into Vietnam. They fought on their own territory. The African revolutions were won That's because right. they fought them on their own territory. That's and right. they was able to beat Russia because they fought on their own territory. This ain't your territory. Right. I just think we got to be a little bit more mature when we start talking about issues of warfare. But much respect to the brothers. Thank you for coming.